Hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at all the different ways you can separate out mixtures. So separating out solids from liquids and separating out mixtures of solutions. Filtration is one of the most common separating techniques, but it's also one of the most overlooked because sometimes it seems a bit too easy. Up here we have our mixture of our solid and our solution, and you can pour them through the funnel which has filter paper in it. Now, if you're doing this in a lab, the really, really important thing to remember here is patience. This is going to take some time to drop through to the bottom. The more solid that um, gets in here, the longer it will take. So you may find it goes quickly at the beginning and then slowly at the end. But do not, under any circumstances, feel tempted to poke this with a glass rod or a spatula because if you tear the filter paper, then your solid is going to go through into your solution at the bottom and you'll just have to start all over again. So your solid is going to remain here in the filter paper and then your solution minus the solid is going to go down into the conical flask. Now you can use the separating technique if you want to get the solid out or if you want to remove the solid from the solution because the solid will collect up here you can then just take this, scrape the solid off um, the filter paper onto um, into a beaker if you want to weigh it, if you want to dry it or you can discard the solid and collect your solution down here. Now your filter paper will do very, very small um, size particles, but you can also use it for separating out larger particles as well. Evaporation can be done quickly if you want to set up a tripod gauze Bunsen burner and use an evaporating basin or evaporating dish to heat your mixture or it can be done slowly if you just put your evaporating basin um, on the side of the bench near a window or near a radiator. This is going to remove the liquid leaving you with a solid behind. Depending on which method you choose for evaporation, we are either going to get small crystals if you evaporate it quickly, or if you are patient and evaporate it slowly, you are going to get some beautiful, beautiful large crystals. Separation techniques getting slightly more complicated now, and distillation. Probably you've seen this as a demo, maybe not one you've actually managed to do yourself just because schools don't have enough equipment. But what we have over here is our round bottom flask with our mixture in it. It is being heated from below. Thermometer up here to check the temperature because distillation requires on things having different boiling points. For example, one of the ones that I like to use in the lab is putting lavender flowers in water. The lavender oil comes out of the water, uh, comes out of the flowers um, into the water, and then the oil and water mixture will go up here. At a certain temperature, they the boiling um, would condense, turn back into a liquid, come down here into the condenser where it will cool down back into a liquid into here, and then the, the, the oil and water can separate out. Another one you could do would be putting water and say ethanol in here. Ethanol um, boils much quicker than water at about 70 degrees. So once this hits 70 degrees the alcohol will evaporate. It will come up here, it will move down the condenser where cold water is going in and out. Um, it will condense and then you can separate off the ethanol in here. And as long as you make sure the temperature doesn't go above 70 degrees you shouldn't get any contamination from water. The water should stay in the flask because the water doesn't boil at 70 degrees, it boils at 100 degrees. Fractional distillation is another separation method similar to distillation. We have our round bottom flask with our mixture in here. Again, it is going to get heated up. Again, they are going to boil at different temperatures if you've got a mixture of solutions and come up here. But in here we have a matrix. Um, this can be a matrix of beads or anything um, that something needs to travel through. Small things will travel through it easier and get to the top faster, condense and then come out. Whereas big, long, complicated things, for example, long hydrocarbons will um, spend more time traveling through the matrix and take longer to come out. This also works. You can have them condensing at different temperatures off here. Um, but this is a combination being based on size and on boiling point. 
slightly more complicated and uncommon separation technique here. We have a separating funnel which has a stopper at the top um, and a tap at the bottom and you have your mixture in here. Um, you generally shake this quite vigorously to mix things up and leave it to settle and they will separate out into two layers like oil and water. You can then open the tap, the bottom, the bottom layer will drip through if that's the one you want, great. If it's not the one you want, the one that you want is, has stayed in the top. So this is one for separating two liquids where you want to keep both of them. Um, you don't necessarily want to lose any of them. With, they might evaporate off if you distill them or they might be too volatile, too flammable, too dangerous for you to heat them up. So this is just a different way of separating out um, liquids.